Climbing a mountain is often used as a metaphor for any long or challenging task, and a lot of the time it's a pretty bad metaphor. But last year my friend Andy and I made the first ascents of some unclimbed mountains in the former Soviet Republic of Kyrgyzstan, and I found the experience surprisingly similar to doing mathematical research. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my trip and you can see how much of it's familiar. Two questions I was asked over and over again, which will definitely be familiar to mathematicians. You do this for fun? And it's still possible to do new stuff? And the second question isn't totally unreasonable. Most people have no idea that there are still unclimbed mountains in the world, or that there's still more maths to be discovered. If you're a bit better informed, you might know that, sure, there's progress going on in both fields, but you only know about the highlights, you know, the dawn wall or the Poincaré conjecture, these hard technical achievements by world experts working at the limit of current human possibility. But actually, there are still hundreds of unclimbed mountains in the world, and at least countably many unproved theorems, and surprisingly many of them are accessible to people with only moderate levels of technical skill, such as myself. Having realised this is a thing you can realistically do, you have to pick a general area. I recommend Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. Minimal bureaucracy, alpine scale mountains, very friendly, go and visit even if you're not a climber, it's lovely. But that's still a pretty big area, so you need to identify something that hasn't been done, which means you need to work out what has been done, which means you need to do a literature review. This is made more difficult by people using different names for the same thing, or the same name for different things, or not being clear about what they actually achieved, or not using what you thought were standard notations. It goes on. And once you've done your literature review, you then have to do another literature review in Russian. Hopefully you'll discover a set of concrete objectives that are undone and within your technical range. So we decided to go to the Kindic Valley, which is shown on the map here, with these uh, four objectives around the side. They're kind of 4,000-ish metres, similar scale to the Mont Blanc Massif in France. Once you've picked some definite objectives, you can then write to people and ask them for money, which is a stage that academic mathematicians will be extremely familiar with. So thank you very much to our sponsors, the Mount Everest Foundation, Elite Mountain Supplies, Gather Foods, High Five Sports Nutrition and RAB. All this time you'll have been training, and in fact, retrospectively, you'll have been training for this your whole life. You can and should learn specific technical skills, like proof by induction or crevasse rescue, but really the way you train for this sort of thing is by solving similar problems with known solutions, because you have to learn to apply your technical skills in the context of a real problem. After you've done all that, it's time to start work. You will inevitably run into disagreements with your collaborators as you want to press on and they want to stay where they are and eat grass. Okay, perhaps that's just a problem with mountaineering. You'll meet people who are already working in the field and sometimes it can feel like you need to learn a whole new language to communicate with them and that you don't share any common points of reference. So it's really useful to have someone who already speaks the language and can introduce you around. Sometimes You'll have objectives that you thought were going to be very straightforward, but when you get there and engage with the problem, you find they're actually quite a lot more difficult than you expected, and you have to scale back your ambitions. Sometimes you pick a promising looking line of attack and work through it, often doing some quite uh, tough hard work to grind out the consequences, and you'll take it as far as it'll go and then discover that actually this doesn't get you where you need to go. You need to go all the way back to the beginning and take a totally different approach, which then, just to rub it in, turns out to be much easier. That's pretty dispiriting. But if you persist and succeed, and chose your objective sensibly to start with, you get an incredible sense of achievement. And if you remain flexible and look around you, you might notice that some objectives you hadn't considered during the planning phase are possible, and possibly even are unexpectedly beautiful. From your newfound perspective, at the end, having succeeded, you can see new objectives, new challenges, uh, new things from uh, for next time. So this is the Oroi Valley next door to Kindik, and to the best of my knowledge, all of these peaks are unclimbed and unnamed. But you can't start work on them straight away. You have to go back and write up what you've done, preferably as clearly as possible, and using standard notations and then submit it to journals, go on the road, tell people about it. And by the way, 
this is usually the stage when you discover the one crucial reference that would have saved you weeks of work back in the beginning. Thank you very much. You can see more photos from the expedition or download our full report or our summary report in English or Russian on Twitter at AndyMilesExped.